Now, number four then from the 2022 Higher Maths Paper 2, seven mark question, area under a curve. So that's fairly straightforward, apart from all the arithmetic. But it is Paper 2, so it's just lots of pressing buttons in a calculator. This graph has got this equation, x cubed minus 5x squared plus 2x plus 8. The total area bounded by the curve and the x-axis. There's a, those areas trapped between the curve and the x-axis. But you have to do it in two parts. In part A, just what's the area? It says shaded. I haven't shaded it in. The shaded area above the x-axis. That's this lump here. Well, the way that you work out these areas is that you add up lots of little thin rectangles. I'll just draw one of them in there. Much thinner than that, though. The area of that rectangle is given by its height, which will just be the y-coordinate of the point, because you're starting at zero, so that's the height of it. And the width of it is made infinitesimally small, so that that rectangle, instead of having a rounded top, ends up so thin that it is just a rectangle. You can think of it just like a column of atoms. You add them all up to get the area. So the area in the first part, we'll call it area 1, is the sum of, that's that integral sign, the sum of all these little rectangles, all these areas, the y times the dx, this times the dx, starting with whatever y is at negative 1, and then finishing with the value when x is 2. So going from x is negative 1 to x is 2, you add up all the heights. The heights are all given by this. Notice they're in a bracket, because there's more than one term there to multiply that little dx. Now, doing that gets a mark. Then you just start integrating. Now, it's a definite integral. We'd be evaluating it, so I'll put down the evaluation bracket. But the process is trivial. Add 1 to the power, divide by the power. Up to power 4, divide by the 4. Up to power 3, divide by the 3. I'd rather do it in the spot rather than putting it all over 3, but if you want to do it that way, do it that way. Maybe I'll be, I'll be a bit naughty here. Up to power 2, but I'll not put anything down, because 2 divided by 2 is 1. And then constant goes back up just to x. You have to evaluate that from negative 1 to 2. Now, doing that gets a mark. Now, the annoying part, because now you've got to substitute in the two limits. So you have to write it all out. And remember, they're all kept inside of a bracket, because it's all of that at 2, take away all of that at negative 1. So you go all the way across. So it's a quarter of, and then you've got a little placeholder, 2. In fact, you could almost just go through the whole thing and, and just put in the blanks. If I've got enough room for this. Oh, just no more. Because that's what you're going to do. You're just going to write it down over and over again, only the first time you put in 2s, and the second time you put in negative 1s. And at doing that, though, you get rewarded with get one mark, one mark for doing all that. It's even worse. The final answer is just one mark. But at least it's paper two, so you can use a calculator. You could work it all out without a calculator, if you can't be bothered pressing the buttons, but these thirds are going to be a nuisance. Oh, there's quarters as well. You're going to have twelfths in this answer. Now, there is a part B in which you're going to work out this area as well. Now, that will be the same calculation. It will still look like this, only with different numbers popping in here. In the first one, you've got a 2 and a negative 1. In the next one, you've got a 2 and a 4. So that 2 doubles up. Once you've done this 2, you've already got that answer. So you can pass that on. Another thing you can do is, you could get all... You know you're going to get that answer anyway. You could get all of these answers in advance. We have to do these two just now. So you could do all three of them at once in one go in your calculator by using the answer function. Whoops. So if I start with the, the negative 1, what I would do would be this. I'd put in negative 1, press equals. Now that's stored in that memory called answer. Now I'm just going to type all this in once, and that'll do for all three of these calculations. So now that I've got it stored in answer, what I do is I just write out that expression, only instead of saying x, I press answer. So the first one, and I, I don't need to bother with the fraction button. I can safely do 1 divided by 4, but times x, or answer. So the first one, I'll just type this in now. 1 divided by 4, oh, times answer to the power 4. Don't forget that, power 4. Get out of that. Don't start putting your thing up in the top there and with all these powers. Minus 5 divided by 3 times 
answer this time it's cubed so power 3 get out of that plus now it's easy it's just answer squared answer squared min oh no it's not minus it's plus 8 answer you can just do 8 answer you can do 8 times answer if you like now that I've done all that I've done it for all 3 because all I need to do now is this I'll put them over here just as a wee note so I'm working out at negative 1 that's my wee evaluation brackets so at negative 1 I just press equals and I get negative 61 upon 12 now press the up button to take you back and you're back at your negative 1 now change that for a 2 press equals now go back now 2 you pressed equals so 2 is now stored in answer go back up when it, the, it says answer press it again and it comes up with 32 upon 3 now go back up again this time I want to change that to a 4 now press equals now 4 stored in answer press the back button back up again now when I press equals I get the answer oh it comes out 5.3 why does it not come up 5 and a third I'll just put 5 and a third because 0.333 is a third I don't know why it didn't do that 16 upon 3 those are all the answers you'll need so for this first part what's the answer at 2 it was 32 upon 3 minus what was the answer at negative 1 it was negative 61 upon 12 now you finish that you can, now you can either do that just by multiplying them both by 4 and then doing add on 61 or you could just do it as 32 divided by 3 plus 61 divided by 12 and you get 63 upon 4 units squared or you could call that 15 that's 123 with 3 left over 15 and 3 quarters or 0.75 units squared just leave it like that that's the last mark Part B, hence calculate the total shaded area. That's the total area trapped between the curve and the axis. You've already done this part, you have to do this part below. Now it's the part below that's the awkward part. You still do the same calculations, but the problem with this is areas are positive quantities. When you work out the area of that rectangle, it's a positive quantity. There it was fine, because what is the height of that rectangle? It's the top take away the bottom, it's y take away zero, so that's just y. But what's the height of this rectangle? It's the top take away the bottom. It's 0 minus y, which means it's negative y's you should be adding up. And that's where the difference, there's two methods you could use here. You could either just work out that integral and then sort out your answer. Or you could start off by saying, ah, that area, if it has to be a positive quantity, is the sum of negative y dx. Maybe I'll put that down. It's negative y dx. Maybe I'll put it in that way, 0 minus y dx. In which case you can take that negative out and have it going from 2 to 4 of, now it's just the same thing, x cubed minus 5x squared plus 2x plus 8 dx. So that would get the first mark. That's me stating area 2 is the negative of this because those y coordinates are going down. There's another way of doing it. I'll just mention that afterwards. And that's just where you, you just take that as it is, work it out, and then at the end go, oops, it's negative. Right, right, I better make that positive. But you can't just make negative positive. You have to make a statement. This way you don't need a statement. You're explaining it here. So now it's just the same as before. It's going to be the negative of... as before. Now here's where you can use that negative though. You can to carry out this calculation twice, subtracting your answers. If you make that negative, that just means you carry out the subtraction the opposite way round. So in the next line, which I'll just put down with blanks first of all, just made it. Now, if I wanted to keep the negative outside, I'd have to put another big bracket around them all with a negative at the front, but you could use up that negative to reverse the subtraction. So instead of doing fours, take away the twos, that negative makes it into twos, take away the fours. 
unless you feel scared to do that. But that's correct, though. But I've got these answers anyway. Now, what were the answers at 2? That was 32 upon 3. What were the answers at 4? That was 16 upon 3. So that's 16 upon 3. So area 2 is 16 upon 3 units squared. Look, it's turned out nice. It's turned out positive. It should have done. So I guess a mark. I've still got to add them up, though. Now, before I add them up, the other way you might have done it is just to leap in here with this integral. Now, if you do that, you can't really start off by saying a2 is the integral from 2 to, 2 to 4 of, etc. Because that's not correct. Because you can't have area equals, and that turns out to be a negative number. You can't have a2 equals a negative number, and then go, oops, that should have been positive. So change it to positive, and say it's positive because it's an area. If you were to do it that way, the best thing to do would be not mention area. If you were to do it that way, just start off with that integral from 2 to 4 of etc dx. Just do that. Get the answer, which would be negative 16 upon 3. So you've not mentioned area yet. You've just done the integral. And then say that means that the area would have to be the absolute value of that because it has to be positive which means that a2 is 16 upon 3. You could put the absolute value, and you could even put a reason in if you liked, since area is positive. So you could do that too. I just think it's simpler when it's correct, just to put a negative in, because it should be maybe explaining it by putting this down first of all, because it's actually 0 minus y for the area between those two parts. Anyway, the last part's going to be, what's the total area then? The total area would be adding the two parts together. So the first area was, I should have put a note there, was 63 upon 4. The second part is 16 upon 3. Just use your calculator, rather than having to multiply that by 3 and multiply that by 4 and add them up. So, so just typing that in gives you an answer of 253 upon 12. For the final mark. Or you could change that to a decimal if you wanted. 21.083 and so on. Notice there's those dot dot dots for and so on. But you wouldn't put that as a final answer though. So you'd probably put 21.08. But that's a twelfth. You're better off with 21 and a twelfth because that's exact. 21 and a twelfth.